Hey guys, I'll rush because time's obviously an issue. Um, I'm, a national I'm the National Senior Learning Technologist for the Endeavour Learning Group. Um, we've got about seven or eight LMSs and they're very different LMSs from beauty um, through to health um, and, all, and, and fitness and that kind of stuff. So they all have different design requirements and things like that. In our department, the EdTech um, does all the design work and uh, in the previous presentation they were talking about teachers sort of being able to do stuff. We don't, do, we don't allow that in our organisation. It's all driven through the Education Technologies Department. We do take input from them, of course, on colours and theming and things like that. But we, we've tried to work out how to roll these things out um, across different courses. Not changing? Okay, um, the first problems we had when, when we looked at courses quite a long time ago was the scroll of death. Um, the, th the courses were visually dull and people wanted image-based navigation. So this is the old course. <laughs> Um, and, and as you can see, this is sort of kind of what I inherited when I came on board. And all of our courses were like this, and you would scroll for hours. Um, font sizes, all sorts of stuff were, were terrible. Um, but you know, it's a pretty common problem that we face across the system. So our solution was to go to the one topic format, um, and you'll see in the next picture, and, and we add some images for navigation. And so that was our first, um, first effort that, that we ended up with. The coloured boxes are the quick links through to assessments and things like that. Um, and yeah, people were happy for a while. But then they wanted more images. They wanted faster and easier navigation. They wanted pretty pictures. And of course, there's opinions on pretty pictures. Um, our first solution was to go to the grid format. And I don't know, you've probably seen the grid format. It's a tile-based format. Um, when we first set it up, everyone was happy. But the grid format loads every resource on your entire page at the same time. So when we had lots of YouTube videos, we were looking at about 26 second load times for pages. And so of course, as you can understand, the students blew chunks. They got really, really angry. Um, you know, my mobile phone data plan, that kind of stuff. And it was a reasonable, reasonable complaint. So the next solution for us was to go to manual grids. And so this is where us in the poor ed tech department would go through and code up these gridded images. We didn't provide the images, they were given to us. I hate them, I think they're horrible. Um, but we'd use the one topic format and these, and these image grids to jump quickly around the courses. And it, it, it looked good, people were happy, ticked all the boxes, and it was simple, but it was tedious. Every course, and like I said, we've got seven LMSs um, where we use variations of this on. Every course, we had to go through and code this, go through, change the, the, the unit codes and things like that, change the section codes. Oh my gosh, it was terrible. And then along came the focus of my talk, Generico. Um, can I just see a hand? Who's used Generico? Right, not many. Um, we talked, people have talked about H5P a bit as the game changer, for me, Generico is a game changer. It solves a lot of problems that people have talked about in terms of repeatable navigation and design and, and many other tools, but I'll get to that. So Generico came along and turned this into this using this. So the box on the bottom right is all our presets. So what you'd do is you'd click on one of these and it might be a course layout design. I think if you can see, if your eyes aren't as bad as mine, there's things like semester nav and things like that. Because our different courses had different setups, I'd click on, say for example, semester nav, I'd just type in course, I don't know, ID 119, um, and it would automatically pull an image bank for that type of course and repopulate all, that, all the um, course ID numbers all the way through the page, and then you get that pretty tile format that we saw before. It takes about 10 seconds to roll out. Very, very simple. What black magic is this? <laughs> Generico is a templating filter. And um, the, the guy that's developed it, Justin Hunt, does a lot of stuff. He does Poodle and all sorts of stuff. Very, very smart guy. Um, I love a lot of his stuff. Um, so it's a templating filter. What's a templating filter? A filter for templates. It didn't mean anything to me. For about a year and a half, I looked at it. And it took a lot of time, a lot of playing, not much information on the internet or YouTube, whatever, and eventually I just kind of stumbled into a solution one day. So how does it work? To put it simply, it's very simple to start off with. If you've got a massive code or whatever for a page, and you put the at at around something, Generico recognises that based on your filter. So it could be YouTube video, it could be all sorts of stuff. So my sample here is, I have a sentence, 
I like to boogie. So I've taken the word boogie and I've popped in my at at either side of it. And so, so now Generico recognizes that from the filter as something I need to change. So if I want to do, and this is from a different LMS, so there's different presets, um, you can see what you want to insert. The right hand one is I like to. So if I was going to use this in my course as a simple repeatable element, all I've got to do is click on I like to, type in something next to boogie, and this is how it, how it, how it appears for that simple sample. So in my case, pontificate, and that's how it looked. So that's a very simple iteration of the example. Now, some people are still trying to think, how does that, you know, how is that useful? So let's, let's play a little. A video wall. Um, I used one from a site called Bootsnip. It's amazing. For building interactive elements in your, in your courses, if you have the Generico filter, Bootsnip, Bootsnip practically gives you everything. This is your HTML, this is your CSS, and occasionally this is your JavaScript. Plop, plop, plop into Generico, and you can get beautiful carousels. You can do all sorts of weird and wonderful um, things. In this case, we've got the video wall. This is the example, and this is kind of what a lot of them look like. HTML, CSS, this one's got no JavaScript. Kind of my preference. Um, less likely to, to have issues with browsers. So, I simplified it. I cut all that crap out and made this very, very simple um, example, and that's what it looks like below. So I've done my Generico. I've put in, inside the at, at there, that's just the YouTube video key. When you go to YouTube, they've all got that like ID number somewhere. So all I've done is I've put that in, and it's a killer rabbit from Monty Python sketch. And you can do it again and again and again, but change it each time. So you can have an instant responsive video wall with as many videos as you care to load on that page. Just remember your load times. The more YouTubes you put on there, unless you've got some kind of, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, image overlay, um, it'll take a, the more videos you put in there, the longer it'll take to load. So this is kind of what it looks like. Um, when you have a quick look at Generico, you set it up, and I've called this one Video Wall Demo. Um, you've got the body. Um, sorry, the picture's not so good. So you can see down the bottom there, there's the YouTube code that I showed before. So boom, instant YouTube. And the great bit is teachers don't need to learn to code. All they need to do is to look for that YouTube, um, the YouTube code and pop it in a little box. Boom, 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 video wall. What else? This is a lesson, uh, just a standard Moodle lesson, but people wanted more color in it. So when you start getting to the stage where you can look at a page and, and right click and go inspect element, you can type in, you can look at the background. If there's a background element, you can go background red or background something or other. For this, we inserted a background image. And again, the teacher can pick it, whoever's creating the resource. But you can do this on any element of the page. This is a course background. For us, lots of LMSs, lots of different courses, everyone's got their own opinion on images. Um, so what, what the Generica does is allows you to apply that just to that page. So in this case, this course, this entire course background is using this one image. So this is a law unit, and so we've got the appropriately pictured gavel. Um, so the teacher can pick that, or we can do it for them. It's nice and easy, and when you back up and restore the course, it goes with it. So you don't need to keep doing it. So it makes it quick and easy to roll stuff out. There's a lot more. YouTube embeds, PDF management, um, alerts, accordion resources, modals, pop-up alerts, and things like that. Have a look at Bootsnip. Anything that's on that site, with a little bit of tweaking, you can pop into your Generico. So if you want one of those alerts that pops up and blocks the page when you go to a page, students, assignment time, or, or something like that, um, you can do it. And it makes it nice and easy to set up. But, um, sorry, I jumped ahead. There's a lot of ideas on bootsnip.com. Um, there's Bootstrap 2.3.2, although you may have heard in, in some of the discussions, the next versions of Moodle are going to Bootstrap 4. So you probably want to sort of keep an eye out for that. And it might take a, a while for some sites to come up with these flashy little toys for Bootstrap 4. Not that hard to convert between them, but a little bit. Other things you can use, HTML page builders. There's a lot of them out there on the web. Um, I see this hasn't updated. Um, but there's HTML page builders where you drag and drop your elements. You can drag and drop columns and boxes and media elements and, and headers and that kind of stuff. And then you just change it. You type in, you know, whatever you want, insert your own YouTube videos. You can download the code for that and use that as an inspiration. Pop your at, at through everywhere for your images or for your course links or YouTube videos and instantly you've got a repeatable, insertable, simple element that the teachers don't need to know how to code to use. A word of caution. Um, this tool can include HTML, CSS and JavaScript. This is a big deal. 
for, for sysops and admins and people like that, it's a potential security vulnerability because unless people, um, you shouldn't be connecting to JavaScript or elements outside your LMS. You should only be pulling stuff internally because the site you pull from um, might have some insecurities. It might get hacked or whatever, and then your LMS is open to them. So finally, thanks and acknowledgements. The plugin developer, Justin Hunt, amazing guy. My coworker, Philip Mackay, he's really, really cool. He's a fitness guy, um, but he was so good at learning technologies, I stole him out of his uh, fitness brand, and now he helps me as an offsider. My line managers, and also all the other plugin developers and the Moodle community in, in general. Um, You've given me a career for the last five years. I don't teach anymore. Yes. Um, <laughs> and just develop full time. So it's a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you.